Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Mercury is a stock market game. And it, it, it's dry, it has small components, and it feels like it's from a different era because it is from a different era. And this is one of those games that's pretty solid. I'll probably put this on the uh, games you may not have heard of that are actually pretty good, even though I'm probably going to inevitably be purging this. When I did a written review for this, it was a keeper, but just barely. But given some time, I feel like I'm going to get rid of it for the same reasons I criticized it then. So let's go into this a little bit. This feels like part of a game. So a lot of times you'll see this little stock market manipulation be part of a game. Here, it's the entire game. And that's fine. If you don't want the bobs and whistles, this will give you just a stock market where uh, you're going to be buying stuff and then you can raise the price or lower it based on the cards that you play. Very easy to play. Very easy for people to understand. I just think I like games like Stockpile a little bit more and some other stock market games that kind of fit that niche for me. Although, if you're looking for just stock market, just a stock market game, this might be one of the top five on the market because it's really that good. It just feels like it's from a different era to me. It slows down a little bit, and I can get this in a much larger game, and I enjoy that a little bit more for my taste. So I'm going to go there with it. But otherwise, you get a very strong stock market, very little luck in it. Other than maybe draw the card, but you have five in your hand you're going to be choosing from. Easy to teach, easy to play, enjoyable. And this is a game, I've said this before, I'd like to see a re-release of this, maybe some upgraded components, uh, some street, I don't really need streamlining the rules. There's a little bit added more to it. I think this would sell fine and be a very, very good game to add to a collection. This is what I'm gonna tell you, even though I'm purging, that you might wanna give another look at, especially if you can find it at a bargain price. Here is the box art. I mean, this is okay. It's really small. It's really weird that they put a picture this small on it when they had this whole thing to do. I do like the artwork that is on it, though. So when you open up, you have a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. You're going to get some player boards here that you can see. And they all have like a little bit different of an artwork on it, but have the same thing on them. And they're only single-sided. They do have a little bit of artwork for the color on the back. Then you're going to get the main board that you'll be utilizing during the game for the stock market, if you will, of how the shares go up and what can happen to this label flat. This is a very nice cardboard that you have. You're going to have a whole bunch of little tokens and chits that you'll be utilizing during the game. Your money will be this little cardboard uh, out. Then you're going to have these cards. Now, the card stock is fine in this game. It's nothing great to write home about. You can see the style of artwork that will be on it. The cards are fairly good quality. The artwork is interesting enough. Some different stuff on here. The components aren't great. Not a, a Insert here is not custom or anything. Everything it's good, not great. Here's a rule book. You're going to get the artwork from the cover of the box again. You're going to have a goal of the game up here and a picture of all of the components up through here. And this will be a picture of setup and kind of how you set up things based on the number of players in the game. Then you're going to have here is a sequence of play that will be going through. Takes you through each of the different actions that you have and how things can change. And then a description of the action cards that you're going to have. End of game, price changes, and how to score on the back of it. Not a whole lot of rules in this game, but a fine rule book. One, I didn't find a whole lot of problems. I found the game to be pretty simple to pick up. A little stock market game, and it worked fine for us. Didn't have any issues. Everything I needed was in the rule book. So the game is pretty easy. You're going to have one of each here on a 10 and one of these commodities on 15. You will shuffle the deck of cards and count out 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This will be set aside as the backup deck in the game. And this will be the deck that you'll start the game out at. There will be a number of tokens and chits that you will utilize based on the number of players. And you'll have those set up here and the commodities over here. Everybody will get a set of cards for their color, and you are ready to go. Each player will begin the game with five cards in their hand, and that will be their setup to get started. Every player will also get a player board. Right here will be all the actions that you can take on a turn. I'm going to go through all the actions here and show you how you can utilize those in the game. The first one is this one up here, which simply tells you that you can perform up to three financial transactions. The second one is to play a price change card from the player board. And here, you would be able to update the price shares and commodities that were affected by the price change. Then you draw a new price change card from the main deck, and your turn will be over. 
First thing you do is make three transactions. You can buy up to three of these. The first thing you do is if you bought one, you would just pay the price listed. If you pay, if you buy two of them, you'd pay the price listed plus one, in this case, $11. If you were to buy three shares, then you would pay the price plus two. You'd pay $12 per share. So just one, 10. If you're buying two, 11. If you're buying three, it would be 12. And these commodities will work the same way, 15, 16, or 17, depending on the number of those that you'd be purchasing. Choosing to sell these, it works the same way, except in the reverse direction. If you sell one, it's 10. Sell two, it's nine. If you sell three, you get eight. And over here, 15, 14, or 13, if you were to sell three. It works exactly the same way. Buying, you pay a higher price. Selling, you pay a lower price. Then you play one of these price change cards. And what they would do is, they, in this case, it will take the blue up, the fishy up one, and the leaves down two. And you would play these onto your board, and then you would change the price of these items, like so, based on the pricing card that you chose. Then what you'll do is you'll shift your card one spot down, leaving this open. If this ever became full of cards, and you had to place another card, then this one would shift off, these would come down, and this one would go there. So they'd be shifting down to the right. So let's say I'm about to play a card. I would, now we're further on in the game, I would shift on my turn all of these prices, then all of these, and then all of these, that would manipulate the board. So in this case, I would put uh, this up one, this down two, this would go down one, but this would go up two, and then this would go up one, and this would go back two, just so I think went. This would shift off, and this would go. So what you're playing is going to manipulate it every turn for all of the players as you go around the board. Then at the end of my turn, I would draw a new price change card into my hand. Now, in addition, each player is going to have three cards that they'll be able to play one time during the game. Each one will give them a special action of something they would do differently. The black market card allows you to put commodities or spices on here that you don't take the transaction now, so it takes the place of any of your financial transactions for this turn, but allows you to kind of hold those on here and do them next time. It allows you to set up a pretty good move. Next is the dividend card, and what the dividend card is going to allow you to do is going to cost you all three of your financial transactions for the turn. But you play this dividend card, and then you choose a chamber which is not yet paid dividends, and this chamber will now pay dividends to all of its shareholders. You place a dividend token on the main board, and all players with share tokens are chosen receive the current share price. So wherever the share price is at, you would get one for each share that you own. And that's how the dividends. This will score once per game per type. Then you have the news card. This will be played instead of a price card, and basically it allows you to kind of clog this up. So these are not as vital as they could be and moving around as much. So you only have the two price cards that you'd be having instead of this one. Then you could take three price cards from your hand, discard those and draw new ones. So the news card can be very powerful to get the right cards in your hand that you want. When the deck runs out, you're gonna play two more rounds, which is what the backup cards are for. At the end of the game, everybody calculates their wealth. You sell all your shares and commodities at whatever price that they're on and the player who has the most money will win the game. So that's what you'll be doing. It's a very simple stock market game based on these prices going up and down, but other people are also manipulating it. So you have some control over what's going on, but not complete control. Who should buy this game? Anybody who wants just a stock market game. You want that stock market manipulation, the buying and selling, and that's it. You don't want any bells and whistles or bobs or weaves added on to anything else. You just want the stock market. Easy to teach, easy to learn. Components are going to be a little bit let down with today's game, although when it was released, it was really pretty. The components are just a little tiny for me overall, but I think if you want just a stock market game, this is an absolute winner. Even though I'm going to purchase, I'm getting this somewhere else, not necessarily in this game, but this is one that you may have missed out on that I recommend to you, especially if you can find it somewhere at a good price. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised.